I'm Nick Hanashevsky. As a professional saltwater fishing journalist, I've explored the world's wildest fishing destinations. Now, I'm bringing you there, into the saltwater underground. Summertime at the Jersey Shore bursts as a hustling, bustling landscape of boisterous dockside bars, salty surfers, and sun worshippers. But most importantly, it offers up full-on fishing opportunity. Each summer, tens of thousands of anglers flock to the seaside town of Point Pleasant to hop a boat in the pursuit of a fish that drives the summer fishery, the summer flounder, aka fluke. With fishing reports going ballistic, I've made a few calls and put together just the right crew looking to scrap with a few flatfish. All right, well, we're sitting here in the middle of September right now along the Jersey coastline in Point Pleasant. Uh, we call it local summer. That's when all the tourists leave for the year. And uh, we're catching the end of fluke season right now. So uh, I'm gonna go meet up with my buddy Mickey and Captain Pat Murphy. And uh, we're going to try to see if we can put some fluke fillets in the cooler before the season ends. Get some fluking with the boys, you know? There they are. About time, huh? <laughs> What's up, Murph? How you been, brother? Hanging in there? Yeah, man. Yo, Mick, hey, what's the deal, man. dude? Yeah. <laughs> How you been, man? Yeah. All right, we got the big plan today, huh? Do some fluking out there? Yeah, do some fluking, see what we can get. All right, well, let's do it. Got to get some big fish today. <laughs> There's probably no other boat I can call in a minute's notice to come fish than my friend Mickey Melchiondo, a.k.a. Dean Ween. He's the lead guitarist for the band Ween and a true rock star, but his real passion lies with fishing. It's high time we get together again and light up some Jersey Fluke. Looks good, Murph. Where are we heading today? What do we got? I'm going to start around the Klondike here. These fish are starting to move off a couple blows that we had and the swell that we had the past couple days so we're gonna try some areas that are good fall areas sounds good and they're making their way back out to the continental shelf right now I guess now that's the fall and it's starting to move offshore yep target the deeper water right exactly we'll see what we can find <laughs> also, nuclear chicken and pink Sean on a little bit of a pod here. There he is. Yeah! <laughs> Just dropped it right back down to him. Missed him on the way up and shook off and dropped it right back down. Another little dude, but right species, that's for sure. Oh, oh yeah, oh, Murphy! <laughs> Murphy! He's saying this is going to need a net. Spent right cool. after another. Oh, straight up and down. Really? I think I gave him a concussion. <laughs> a whole bucktail rig. Right? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> First there keeper of the day. Nice. nice. Look at that, Murph. And we got to hold them down so the other boats don't see. Nice quality fish. There. Right. That's your fish, brother. That's good, man. That's what we're talking about. Jersey fluke right about here. It's about maybe a two, two and a half pounder, maybe? Yeah. Could be. Look at that. Beautiful fish. And look at the colors on him. Just so. So radical how they camouflage and blend in with the sand floor. And I gotta take pictures of my boys, prove that they caught some fruit. So when there's little or no drift, we're using a bucktail rig, which is, consists of 25 to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, the bucktail tied with a loop knot on the end, tipped with your favorite bait, and then a teaser 
uh, tied up about 20 inches and on this particular teaser I got the Savage Gear sand deal and a regular bucktail hair and we'll tip it with spearing or squid drop it down and you work it vertically up and down when there's no drift you gotta imagine the fluke sitting down there in the sand all camouflaged with his eyes looking up and this little thing comes past him this guy's hooked up and then and the bait comes past him bouncing off little puffs of sand off the bottom yeah. Shoots out and eats it. That's what I like to imagine anyway. I don't really know how they feed. You're always I just made that whole thing up, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're always thinking about the loop. Oh, nice, yeah. oh, There you go. That's a, nice That's a head shaker head. again. That's why it feels so big. I'll hook the bag. There he is. is. Alright. We got this guy creeping up on us to mug us. Oh, we got a head shake. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Hit the hit the Savage Gear sand deal right there. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Usually people want all these scented baits on the teasers, but even something that's got a little bit of a action to it, like this, like I said, little Savage Gear sand deal paddle tail goes through the water, and it appears to be a swimming fish in the current, which is awesome. I want to try to find a big fish, so Let's do line them up. We're going to take a ride. This episode of Saltwater Underground with Nick Honoszewski is brought to you by at Nick Honoszewski on Instagram, Grundens, Savage Gear, Bubba Blade, Shimano, and Grumpy's Tackle. This episode of Saltwater Underground with Nick Honoszewski is brought to you by at Nick Honoszewski on Instagram, Grundens, Savage Gear, Bubba Blade, Shimano, and Grumpy's Tackle. over the the Miss Maggie May <laughs> went down in 1904 it was it was delivering uh, mittens and wool hats to uh, Albania when Somali pirates put two missiles in her side um, <laughs> so Jersey legend 15 guys went in the water and 16 guys came out and they still can't figure out how that happened <laughs> that's the spot those fluke like laying in that low profile stuff in and around, right? You don't really want the, the big high rex, you know? Oh, there we go. Oh, whoa, we might have a good one here. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Could be a good one. Thing looks like it has some girth the way it's bending that rod. Oh, he's a tagged fluke, hey. check that out. So check this out. Somebody tagged this fluke, we gotta write the number down. So they put these tags on all sorts of fish, and this one happens to be on a fluke. It looks almost like a brand new tag. Yeah. But they insane. tag them, so you know when you get them returned, you know how much they've grown and how big they've gotten. I've never even seen a tag fluke like that. Look how lucky that is, man. Yeah, usually, yeah. usually there's grime all over. Watch this tag yesterday. That's what I mean. Is it, is it <laughs> but that is so cool, man. You'll never see that. I mean, Sometimes you rarely, it's... rarely ever get to see a tag fluke. Here we go. All right. Yeah, he's going back in. This is like fish here. We'll let this tagger go. Well, he's your fish now. Look, he's gonna catch, he's gonna get the doormat on my rod. <laughs> as, as I'm measuring his fish, by the way. Double header. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. The second one looks like a keeper. Yeah, look at this, look at this. Ah. <laughs> that's how it gets done on Murph's boat, man. Double headed. The fat flatty, the butte, man. 
Unbelievable. There's a whole lot of streaks going on there. Yeah. Seems like the wind's picking up a little bit, so these bucktails aren't really holding ground anymore. We're gonna have to go to the bottom rigs now. Double tandem hook rig here, fish finder slide, whole squid baits. Drop that thing down, it'll look like a live squid. Swimming on the bottom. And that's when those big 8 to 10, 12 pound doormats are gonna hit. I mean, that thing doesn't look like a live squid ready to get eaten. Yeah, Murph. Murph's already on. Nice sea bass. Look at that thing. Beauty. Beautiful double handed sea yeah. bass. <laughs> Yeah. That's my favorite eating fish in the, in the ocean. That's the truth. Yeah, you found the sea bass wreck. Oh, he's eating the whole squid. Robust. Look at that. And they're get, he's got that real beautiful blue color on him, yeah. too. Look at that around his eyes. Little knucklehead. You call him knucklehead. Guys, just line them up here. We're going to try a different spot to see if we can find a couple more. The cool thing about fluking in Jersey is that there's a huge party boat scene for it. So we're on a private boat right now, but the party boat's like the gambler, Captain Mike and Bob Bogan. They run like half day trips, 8 to 12, 32 to 6, 30. So anybody can come out and fluke during the day. It's awesome. Woo! That's the boys on the gambler crushing it. It's morning and uh, it's yeah. not even nine o'clock. And we're getting fish after fish. <laughs> come on, get on. Now it's not a doormat, but it could be over 18. See, so looking well, I'm catching all these like 17 inches, you know? Close, but another beauty. Hit the Savage Gear sand deal again, which is nice. I love that. Oh, flip flop back in the water. But Mickey and I, we, we called each other earlier today, like typical Jersey guys wearing Adidas pants, you know, on the boat. We're like, yo, yo, bro, you wearing your Adidas today? I called him late last night. I was going to wear my gold flute medallion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nick. 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 Nick's got a good one. All right. All right. Take it slow and low. Murphy, you want to grab the net on that? Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. Ah, that looks like a nice one. Rod's bent. There we go. There you go. That's it. <laughs> Another beauty fluke. Woo! That's solid. That's a that's Thank a dinner close. table fluke right there. All right. Oh, dude. Look at this, dude. Unless, unless you got like a bonito or something, dude. Yeah. That could be a tunny or a bonito. There's something crazy going on. I don't know. Bring him up. Hopefully, a he's great white gonna, shark. He's going up. See a bonito or a tunny or chub mackerel. This is going to be awesome. Oh, no, 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 no. Bring him in. It's like a scab. What is that? It's like a mackerel. Look at that. Something. That's like a chub mackerel, right? Or what yep, is that? Yep. Chub mackerel. Beauty little fish. You don't really see them Butterfly around here too much. Up. Whether he's on the Dauntless or his own boat, Murph's always putting us on fish. Always. Drift around the wreck here. See if we can get a longer. Secret wreck, I see. How about that? Big fluke laying by these big wrecks, right? That's where they're gonna stage. That's where they're gonna go. So we just pull right back up to where one of the wrecks that we started on earlier in the day. This cat over here, right when we left, he said about a 16-foot great white shark was circling his boat. Pretty big fish, shark, right? 17 feet, he says. Unbelievable. Kept circling the boat, huh? Oh, dude, we gotta see that thing come back. It's probably 
circling the area because there's so much bunker and fluke and sea bass coming up. Speaking of which, look at Murph. Coming up a little easier or a little bit easier? Yeah, I got like 65 rods. And my house pretty much consists of deer mounts and fishing rods. <laughs> We're an outdoor span. That's, oh, that's the Murphy family, brother. Well, about this is all of us, with all these fish, we all got a keeper, too. That, oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Never mind. Nick didn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this the fish you covered? I don't know. This is what I've kind of been waiting for. Got some girth. He made a run, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jake. That's what I'm talking about. All right. That's the one I've been waiting for right there. These guys might have the high hooks today, but I think this one's the pool winner. Let's get him in the, on the ice. Thick fillets on that thing. All right, we're eating good tonight. Now we're talking. Typical Jersey guy stealing our fish. <laughs> oh, Murphy gives the three whistles. I thought that was only a party boat thing. <laughs> three whistles. Three whistles means the day is done. Hell of a day, boys. I'll tell you what. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now that we got our fresh fluke fillets, I know exactly who we're going to bring this to. Alright, I am really jazzed today because I'm in my hometown of Clinton, New Jersey and I'm meeting up with my old school buddy, Chef Josh DeKellis, who owns Juniper Hill in Clinton here. And Josh has been all over the world as a celebrity chef from New York to Paris to Tokyo, working for Wolfgang Puck, been on Iron Chef and the Today Show. We're gonna bring our fresh flounder fillets and see if he can cook them up home style here. Hey buddy. There he is. <laughs> What's, up, What's going on, Daddy? What's the word, man? What do you got today? Oh, we got the fresh flounder fillets, which I told you, and yeah. uh, we also got one whole one in the Jeep. So. Terrific, terrific. How Pretty, they look? They look good? They, they fought good. Now they you gotta good. you gotta really uh, do the end game for all us right. here, well, you know? Hopefully it won't be too much of a fight back here. <laughs> all right, let's get cooking, all, all right? right man, let's do Show it. us what to do. All right. All right, Josh, looks like we got the fluke on the plate here. I don't know if I caught that one or Mickey. If it's a smaller one, it's gotta be Mickey's, but you're gonna show us what to do here, right? I uh, One of the best things for me about being a Jersey boy is how close we are and like you feel this fish it's like it's just out of rigor mortis you don't want to get to them too fast or they're actually too hard right and then when you go to eat them they're almost crunchy fluke has two different in my opinion it's got two different personalities and what I'm hoping to do today is show you both the first thing I do is I pop the head off here you want to make sure you get all this blood out because you don't want it to stain that beautiful, pristine color of the fluke. And then you just run your knife right down here and the bones kind of show you what to do. One good thing about fluke is they're relatively easy to fillet. They come off into both halves like that, opens up just like a, like a sandwich almost. Where'd you get this thing, man? Uh, well, we were all fishing right at the Sea Girt Reef, you know, roughly about three miles off. and. Uh, you know, right at the end of the season, last day of the season, we ended last up day, getting huh? there. <laughs> this, is a, this is a great fish. I'm so yeah. happy you brought it. You know, with the ceviche, for me, it's like, it's really you're just showing off the, the freshness of the flute. So I start from the tail, and then we're just going to slice nice, wow, nice pro stuff right there, thin brother. pieces. We have this like this. Unbelievable. That, that looks like a, a work of art, like a painting coming together all at once with I mean, all the little that's, pieces. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of why I do what I do. Like, man, you sure. guys, I, it makes me 
excited to share this side of it from the guys who catch it. Right. You know, it's uh, it's rare. I don't get to see enough, pal. Well, we're gonna be getting you out. If you're cooking like this, we're getting you out on every single right. trip we're All doing right. out. You know. We'll go. Uh, we'll, me and Mick will try this out to All begin right, with, and it. then we'll start prepping the other fish. See Beautiful. what happens. All, All right. right. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> This episode of Saltwater Underground with Nick Honoszewski is brought to you by at Nick Honoszewski on Instagram, Grundens, Savage Gear, Bubba Blade, Shimano, and Grumpy's Tackle. What I'm gonna do now is show the other side of the fluke, which is what I was trying to talk to Nick about. See, while these guys are eating the ceviche, we're gonna make a cooked fluke preparation. Being a Jersey guy like I am, uh, I know what swims around here. We're super blessed with abundance of shellfish, oysters, clams, uh, fresh squid. So I like to think about taking this fish that doesn't have a lot of flavor, bringing it back to its natural surroundings with all of these great things uh, that swim with it. We're gonna pinwheel this thing a little bit and then create a taller piece to work with. All right, we're gonna season these guys up with a little salt. I am a sucker for the Old Bay. All right, so I got my brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, egg wash. It's just a beaten egg. And then we're gonna throw this shredded phyllo on it make sure our fluke is cooked. Oh, you see how that went through nice? Oh, it's perfect. Perfect, perfect. That's it. This is the dish I made for Nick and his buddies. I'll call it crispy fluke with sea scented spinach and rose cove oyster cream. This is unbelievable, man. All right, fellas. Woo! Josh got it going. Number here, two. Look at this. Number two. This, oh my <laughs> God, it's heaven. This is insane. This is so delicious, man. This you is like really, that one, huh? really good. I can't believe it. It's that fish <laughs> you guys I'm... caught, man. It's just about letting it be its fresh <laughs> self. I, you know? I've eaten flounder my whole life, and I had no idea. I mean, this is as good as anything I've ever had. You gotta go out and learn how to fish yourself instead yes. of like going to buy it at yes. a store because the procurement of that fish. You know, not only do you understand where it came from, you have the respect yes. of going out and catching that fish and all the time, effort, knowledge, I love that. spirit that it takes True. to go find and catch that fish and hunt it down, essentially, is what you're doing when you're fishing, is hunting fish. And then to be able to take that and so you understand that fish and what it took to get that instead of just going to the store right. and buying it. You Amen. Know? Yeah, that's Amen. Amen. That's Amen. 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 You know, I like that. But that's why, you know, cheers <laughs> up to fishing, <laughs> boys. Yeah. All right. Once again, guys, thanks a ton for everything. Okay, you guys rock and roll, man. Thanks for catching the fish. Thanks for cooking it again, you know? Anytime. <laughs> Great stuff. That's how it rolls, bro. Right, thanks. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you. What elevates a good fishing experience into a great one? Without a doubt, pulling in fish after fish to load the cooler definitely helps. Plus, having a pro chef as a friend to cook up the catch doesn't hurt either. But there's something more than that. Greatness comes when you share the total experience among those that started out as fishing friends, but now you can call family. And along the Jersey Shore, there's no lack of either.